Uh, Samika, I guess what you're fundamentally saying is that people have underestimated the power uh, of the renewal phase of iPhones and the renewal cycle heading into the iPhone 13. Yep. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, of course. Pleasure to be on. Um, I think overall, uh, if you look at the technology leadership that Apple has established for the first generation of 5G phones, we really ex expect that to continue beyond the first generation of iPhones, which is the iPhone 12, and extend into the upcoming launch that we're expecting in the next month or so here. Uh, when you think about the large install base that Apple has, 5G is not going to be a one-year phenomena. It's going to be a multi-year upgrade cycle. We are excited about the iPhone 13, the up, not only the upgraders into it, but also switchers. You're seeing a lot of switchers coming over from Android because of the leadership that Apple is establishing with the 5G devices. And just to give you a preview of what we're excited into next year, really, and that's where really the acceleration in growth comes from, is the iPhone SE, which is going to be a 5G device. And a lot of investors seem to underappreciate the uh, kind of the capability of that device, as well as the uh, upgrade and switchers that can come into that device. It's going to be an affordable 5G phone. You're going to see a large install base. We estimate it's about like 400 million install base that has devices that are smaller screen size than that. And they're really going to look at that device as a good upgrade option into a 5G device. And so as you take that full year into account, not only the iPhone 13, but the device coming next year, it's really going to be a strong upgrade cycle, which investors don't tend to appreciate at this point. They're just concerned of 5G being mm -hmm. a one-year phenomenon and rolling off after that. I, the, the ability to use that extra G the, the, for, for the 5 it depends on your network and, and what kind of G network that provider has, number one. I have a 5G phone. What is the extra G going to re... On the occasions where my 5G illuminates, what is the extra G going to do for me, Mr. Ta Chatterjee and uh, yeah. Mr. Chatter 5G? Uh, and 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 why am I going to want it? Yeah, no, sure. Um, so what we're seeing again is that the you're seeing service providers really roll out 5G infrastructure at this point, right? So you do go a multi-year cycle where the service provider starts to test their 5G network. You start to get those capabilities on certain devices in certain parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And then 5G starts to become more nationwide. And you get not only a better experience out of it, you have applications that come out of it suited for those kind of uh, experience level that you had. We're still in the very early stages of 5G. You're really looking at 5G being enabled for mobility use cases at this point. The service providers are on track to roll out nationwide 5G. And as you start getting into the uh, experience of a 5G device, uh, keep in mind, when you sell a phone, you're not selling a phone purely because on a 5G feature. You're selling a phone because you have multiple other features. Cameras becoming Correct. an increasingly relevant feature in a phone, which again, you see, keep seeing Apple making incremental tweaks to it every year. You're seeing kind of the facial recognition, the security, the privacy, all feeding into that kind of preference or consumer preference for an Apple device over mm -hmm. the competition. And I think 5G is just one of the features you sell, but. I, your fair point is very fair. You're still very early stages of 5G as a network, and you're going to see that continue to evolve as you go along here. Well, when I replaced, I wanted the fifth G. I, I really did. Uh, and uh, but I, I just I, uh, and 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 I I think it's going to be great when it's all functioning and, and everything. And you're right. I, I use my phone less for phone calls than I do for anything else. I mean, it's it's a phone incidentally uh, to me, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think, I mean, data is a part of it, right? You're yeah. using more and more for it for data. That, again, goes back to the experience. You're seeing consumers looking to do kind of uh, their workplace activities from home, from different uh, locations, and the Apple products generally cater to that. What you right. found over the pandemic is that Apple has just found a way to connect to the consumer a lot better. They've gone direct to the consumer. Their stores right. were closed last year. Even okay. then, the features across these devices have really stood out relative to competition, and that's where you tend to, as you even move into a hybrid environment where right. people are more diverse on the geographic location, the devices tend to carry themselves. Thank you for coming on, Samik. I hope you don't mind that I called you Chat, Mr. Chatter 5G. Maybe I've given you a new nickname, but uh, they'll call you that around the office. Samik Chatterjee, we thank you. We, thank you.